Like I've been at this for a long time. I still kill stuff. I have the blood of a lot of plants on my hands. Hi, welcome to Lilies and Tomatoes, your go-to place for simple and practical tips and tricks on how to start a garden all the way through how to use what you grow. This is from my live class that I teach on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays on Facebook. If you'd like to attend a live class or ask me a question, check out the link in the description. Dirt. Uh, <laughs> well, what What is the difference between dirt and soil? Where do you find what you find at a big box store and what you want for container gardening? For container gardening. If we have not met yet, my name is Quincy Adams and I want to help you grow some of your own food in a small space on a budget. Let's get started. Okay. So I know I put got dirt in the title, but you really don't want dirt dirt is bad so the difference between dirt and soil is this dirt is dead soil is alive soil has amendments in it it's got organic materials in it it's got like microbes and all kinds of living things in it soil is going to nourish your plants dirt is just going to sit there dirt is bad soil is good so um let's talk about what you're going to find if you go to a big box store so if you go out into the big, like it's just normally outside in the big section where all they have, where they have all the dirts and amendments, you're going to see a couple different kinds of topsoil. You're going to see premium topsoil. You're going to see potting soil. You're going to see potting mix. You're going to see, <coughs> excuse me. You're going to see compost and peat and some other amendments. And then you're going to see organic, versions and traditional versions of the soils. You're going to see garden soil. You're also going to see probably a moisture control potting soil. And that's all in those big bags all around in the, the dirt section of the big box store. Well, the soil section. Um, so all of those things are very, very different. It's not just the price. Some of it is marketing, but there's different qualities that a, a good soil is gonna have if you're gonna be planting in a raised bed or a container. Um, so what you want for container gardening is either potting soil or a potting mix. You do not want topsoil. Topsoil is just not a good quality soil and it gets compacted very easily. So if you're trying to plant seedlings or seeds in topsoil, because it's so dense and there's no air or water that can get through it very easily, it's gonna stunt the growth of your plants. So they're not gonna get big. Like if you plant them, if the seeds sprout at all, they'll stay seedling size because the soil is just too dense for them to get through. A good potting soil is gonna have things in it like perlite, peat moss, vermiculite, maybe some cocoa coir, depending on the mix you buy. Uh, we will get into all of those amendments at a later time because we could go on and on and on about it and I won't right now. But just know that potting soil has got a lot of lightning stuff in it, lightning elements to it that's gonna help water and air build up and like be in pockets in the soil that's good for your roots. You want your roots to be able to have access to all of that and you want them to be able to move in there freely. So you don't want topsoil for your garden. Um, garden soil is okay for your garden. If you need to buy bags, if you're filling up big raised beds, garden soil is a good alternative to potting soil. If you're, if you're doing small containers, like small pots, you want potting soil or a potting mix. Potting mix is all amendments and no soil. Potting soil has is soil mixed with the amendments. So if you see mix, there's no soil in there. It's just all, it's all the amendments without the soil. So if you want to use that to amend your soil in your garden, you can do that. You can use garden soil, which is going to have some amendments in it, some organic material in it. Um, so that's a good choice for a raised bed. If you're going to make your own potting soil, then you can use garden soil and mix it with your own amendments which is what I personally do, and I will show you how I do that another time. Um, but just know that topsoil, unless you're filling a hole in your lawn, is not good soil. And like, if you wanna do it super cheap 
and you have a lot of really high quality amendments, you could do that. I have done that. But with with topsoil, it's hit or miss. Like you can get topsoil that's really crumbly or you can get topsoil that's like makes these really large hard masses that you can't break up easily and that's more trouble than it's worth. Just get garden soil or potting soil. It's better for containers and raised beds. And if you want to do it cheaply, getting it by the truckload is better. That's not available everywhere, but if you can find someone that can deliver a truckload of something that's more, that's got organic material in it, that's not just topsoil or just dirt, then that's good for your garden. If not, you gotta do it. You gotta start with amendments. Uh, what I've done before when I have expanded my garden, when I had like, I planned it out in the winter time and I said, okay, I'm going to add four two foot by two foot raised bed bags. I'm going to add 10 seven gallon bags. I'm going to add 10 two gallon bags. So I added all that up and I'm like, okay, that's a, a lot of soil that I'm gonna need. So in order to like save some money, I only filled them halfway to two thirds the first year, just because that was a lot of soil. This year, I gotta make up the difference and I'm adding more bags. So there's always a balance, but um, just don't use topsoil. It's just bad, 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 bad. Not topsoil, not premium topsoil, bad news. I'm gonna check to see if there's any comments or questions. I have potting mix, but I'm moving to make a raised bed. I have, potting mix is good. Potting mix is just uh, the amendments without the soil. You can add potting mix to existing ground soil in a raised bed and make a nice soil for your raised bed. That is a very good alternative. That's a good choice. Um, just potting soil can get, or potting mix can be expensive, but you can also sometimes find it online uh, in a compressed form. So with compressed, um, sometimes it'll be a soil mix or sometimes it'll be a non-soil mix. You can find compressed peat, compressed super soil. I've seen that marketed as super soil and compressed coconut coir, um, shredded or in chips. And that is one way that I um, expand my soil. That's one of my main components in my potting soil is that I can find that online compressed um, it's going to be a little bit heavy. Um, shipping is kind of a little bit, but like I plan that out in the winter time. I buy in bulk and I try to make my soil purchases in February for the last two years before. So I got my, I was able to get most of my soil before things went crazy because I have noticed on some of the sites that I normally look at, their prices have gone up because of supply chain nonsense and shenanigans, but um, that stuff is harder to get now. Unfortunately, now that a lot of people are thinking about growing a garden. Okay, are there any other questions before we move on? I don't see any more questions, but thank you, Melissa, for participating like a great, great little student. So before we um, leave tonight, I want to ask you guys a question. What is or has kept you from starting a garden? So just think about that. You're watching the replay, put your answer below. Uh, or message me or email me or however you want to answer just to think about that what is it that was keeping you from starting a garden in the past or is keeping you from starting a garden now and I want to make sure that I'm helping you get over that hurdle so hit me with your answer and uh, we will talk about light requirements tomorrow and if we if the weather is uh, okay I want to do a video outside over the weekend and I want to talk about compost um, so if that happens, then yay, we'll be outside. And if not, not, then I will probably hopefully get to my deck tour. The weather has not been good. And like the five, for the five minutes of the weather is good. That's when all my neighbors come out and the noise is unreal. So, uh, I will leave you guys with that tonight. Tomorrow we're talking about light requirements. I hope this was helpful. Oh, is that another question? One, one second. Uh, if I arrange for a truck, load should I pay for a lot plan for a lot of amendment um depends on what size bed you're of like you're talking about one bed multiple beds uh what are you getting delivered you're getting a soil or you're getting compost um just like read the details and make sure you know what you're getting and you can and you plan for it before you get it so if there are just drop if it's just a truckload of dirt that's not a good deal you don't want more dirt 
you, and you definitely don't want dirt from someone else's yard or construction site because it's gonna have like nails and stuff in it. That's no good. What you really want is, um, if you're getting something trucked in, if you can't find a, a bulk potting soil or potting mix, then just get compost. An aged compost is a good amendment for your soil. It attracts beneficial worms. It's gonna like add organic matter to your soil. It's gonna help with water retention. It's gonna be really good. And it's a good like one thing to add. So if you're doing a raised bed, I wouldn't mess around with a lot of like perlite or vermiculite. Uh, maybe some peat I would probably add to a raised bed, but a lot of the other stuff is better for, for containers. It's how you adjust the water retention and drainage in a container. Let me just make sure there's, there's any more questions. Answer to your question if you're spending a bunch of money and then killing everything. Okay, um, unfortunately when you're growing a garden, I've been doing this for 18 years. I still kill stuff all the time. That's gonna happen. And there's no, it's not ever gonna be perfect. The, you just need to do it. Um, I, I mean, we started a bunch of stuff from kitchen scraps last week. I killed the celery. I forgot about it. I didn't put it back in the dirt. Sorry, it's dead. Like I've been at this for a long time. I still kill stuff. I have the blood of a lot of plants on my hand, but I still keep going because there's, it's better to just do it. It's miraculous and scientific and all kinds of coolness all at the same time. If you're thinking about growing a garden, if you want to get some of your own food, I think the benefits way outweigh the drawbacks, but you need to be a little bit smart about how you spend your money if you don't have an infinite supply of money because it can be extremely expensive, but it can also be done very frugally. It's all about planning and asking around. Any more questions? Do you have a favorite brand of, of soil? Uh, no, I don't. I usually, I buy something different almost every year. Sometimes it depends on what store I'm at. Sometimes it depends on what they have available. And a lot of times if you're buying soil later in the season, all they have left are bags that are broken open and they've been like out in the rain for months. And the bags get really slimy. And sometimes they build up like a lot of mold inside and it's gross. So I prefer to get my soil as early in the season as possible. I just look around and pick the best mid price option. So this year I ended up buying a lot of it's expert brand garden soil and I'm mixing that with perlite and peat. Um, and then depending on what kind of container or what's growing in that container, a little bit of sand. Um, and last year I had, I actually went and found a farmer who was giving away aged compost, horse manure. So I went up twice and I bagged up and put them in garbage bags and put them in my trunk, uh, several hundred pounds of compost and amended all of my soil with the compost. And I am uh, going to try to kickstart my own personal compost um, this weekend because it's getting warmer. But, um, so I don't have a preference. I have bought, I do have an open bag of miracle Grow Organics Choice. Um, I bought that at Costco and it just happened to be the only kind of um, potting mix that they had. Um, but generally, I am not an organic gardener. I am not super concerned about being strictly organic. I use some organic practices, but being all organic is not a priority of mine. So I generally do not buy organic soil. It just so happened that I bought that because that's what they had. Um, but generally, I'm going for a garden soil at the beginning of the season. And if I need something at the end of the season and I still have a lot of amendments, that I'm usually gonna buy topsoil if it's not too compacted. Sometimes you can get topsoil with a lot of sand in it, and that's great for like a potting citrus. So not a particular brand, but I try to buy in bulk, and I, buy, I try to buy a lot at the beginning of the season because the bags can get nasty by the end of the season. Some places will discount the soil that's ripped open, but I don't want the mess, and I don't wanna deal with it. That's just my personal preference. Any other questions? Nope. Okay. I hope that was helpful. And uh, I hope you guys have a great night. Stay safe, stay home, and think about that question. What is or has kept you from starting a garden in the past or right now?
Bye.